Let your feet go down. Cause we are the girls from Evergreen Avenue shaking. You can. I grew up in the birthplace of hip-hop music and culture, the Bronx, New York. During the early 80s, I lived in the South Bronx on Evergreen Ave, right off of Westchester Ave. Above the street sign Evergreen was a number six train line. It seemed like all the bodegas, corner stores as those in the neighborhood called them, were in competition. The bodega that was located across the street from my building, right at the corner, had neon lights that read Lotto. Across the street was another store with the words grocery store written in graffiti. Parallel to that was another store that contained very few groceries. Stores such as those were usually cover-ups for drug trafficking. In the next block over, there was yet another bodega which had a portrait of a madman sprayed on the face of the building. The portrait reminded me of the joke in the deck of playing cards. The South Bronx was home to many underprivileged people. Parks, pools, and community centers were non-existent in my hood. So for the people living there, especially the poor, it was all about finding ways to laugh and have fun. In the summer, we looked forward to opening the fire hydrant. We called it the pump. We flooded the streets with water. No one cared that the pump was supposed to be used to put out fires. The young boys wore ripped jeans turned into shorts and were shirtless, revealing their skinny, hairless chests. They made a hose by cutting off both ends of a soup can and attaching the remaining cylinder to the flowing water. They used it to spray the vehicles as they drove by. We called it the car wash. The OGs, respected men of the community who sold illegal drugs and made a lot of money, drove through my block in expensive luxury cars, blasting the latest hip-hop songs with smiles on their faces. Everything about an OG was glamorous, from the fresh wax paint on their vehicles to the thousand-dollar rims and tinted windows and leather interiors to their tailor-made suits worn with shoes that shine brighter than Mr. Clean's boyhood. I watched the OGs lean back, nod their head to the music, and roll their tinted windows up for the car wash. One by one, they slowly drove by and watched the excitement on the young boys' faces as they sprayed the water. The water looked like diamonds rolling off their vehicles. Imagine that, diamonds in the hood. It was like a scene from the movie Cinderella. Unrealistic, but not impossible. Every young boy that was living in poverty wanted to be an OG someday, and every girl wanted to marry one. Judging by the satisfied look in the OG's eyes, giving the young boys something to do made them feel justified about polluting the streets with drugs.